Hello students, welcome back to our channel Diksha Karnataka. So as you know, already the mock test 4 has been released on Monday. So we will be discussing the chemistry solutions part 2. Uh, previously I have released a video where we have discussed the solutions from question number 1 to question number 30 which was part 1. And in this part 2 we will be discussing from question number 31 to 60, right? And if you haven't downloaded the question paper yet, you can go to the uh, join our WhatsApp channel and from there you can get the uh, question paper so solve them and then check the answers okay so now let us see the first question that is today's first question 31 activation energy is given okay k1 k2 are the rate constant at two different temperatures t1 and t2 so we have to find out what which equation it relates so very simple question arrhenius equation ln of k2 by k1 is equal to ea by R 1 by T1 minus 1 by T2. Okay, so very small, small differences are there in all the options. I'll tell you. See, if ln is there, we should not write 2.303. 2.30 we will come if log is there. So this option is incorrect. Similarly, here it is 1 by T1 minus 1 by 2. So this part is wrong. So that is why this option is incorrect. If you see in option C, the plus has come, right? It has to be minus. So that is why this equation is also incorrect so the correct answer for this question is option d very simple direct formula based question okay next cathode reaction in dry cell we know manganese oxide and ammonia so the correct answer for this question is option b theory based question okay which of the following has the highest freezing point this is little tricky question see here whenever a solute is added the freezing point decreases right so what is delta tf i into kf into m now if i m value is very high okay then freezing point depression will be more and freezing point will be least so what we have to find means what i can say is if i m value is less then delta tf will be less and then freezing point of that solution will be maximum right so for all these options we can calculate the i m value right so i value is 2 here and 0 0.01 so i will get 0 0.02 then here we will get 0 0.03 then in option c we will get 0 0.1 and in option d we will get 0 0.2 so you see in which of the following i m value is the minimum that is in the first option so depression will be minimum and the freezing point will be maximum so correct answer is option a okay now let us go to the next question from chemical kinetics okay so the rate constant is given rate law is given to you so you can see it is a second order reaction 1 plus 1 so n value is equal to 2 what is the unit of k you have to remember the general unit of k is mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second inverse so k value will be mole minus 1 liter second inverse so i can say this one the correct answer for this one will be mole minus 1 liter second inverse that is option c okay next go to the 35th question half life period of the first order reaction is given with initial concentration this much initial rate this much then we have to find out the half life okay so you can see it is a first order so can i write rate law is equal to k into a right so what is rate value rate value is 0 0.00352 is equal to k into what is 0 0.01 is a value right then can i write k is equal to 0 0.00352 by 0 0.01 right now this is my k value half life is asked right so can i write half life is equal to 0 0.693 by k value so that is equal to 0 0.693 i can substitute this k value here 0 0.00 sorry 0 0.00352 divided by 0 0.01 right so you can solve this equation then the correct answer for this question is option b okay next okay we have to tell the incorrect statement okay so we let us first write down the differential equation minus dp by dt 
is equal to minus dq by dt is equal to 1 by 2 dr by dt is equal to ds by dt right now you can see let us check all the options rate of appearance of p so now one uh, one more thing the word disappearance should be used for reactants and the word appearance should be used with products okay why because uh, with the rate of when the reaction continues reactants concentration keep on decreasing and product concentration keeps on increasing so we will tell rate of disappearance for reactants and rate of appearance for products okay so rate of disappearance of p is equal to rate of disappearance of rate of appearance of s okay this is correct we have to tell the incorrect one okay next uh, rate of disappearance of q rate of disappearance of q is equal to half of rate of disappearance of r okay so this is also correct next is rate of disappearance of p is equal to rate of disappearance of r okay you can see here uh, rate of disappearance of p okay rate of disappearance of p is half of rate of disappearance of r this is the relation but what it is given they have given rate of disappearance of p is equal to rate of appearance of r so that is why this statement is incorrect let us see the next one rate of disappearance of q is equal to half of rate of disappearance of r so this statement is also correct the correct answer for this question is option c okay once again we can see the statement which is incorrect okay so rate of disappearance of rate of disappearance of p is equal to rate of disappearance of s that is correct rate of disappearance of q is equal to half of rate of appearance of r that is also correct rate of disappearance of p is equal to rate of disappearance of r that is incorrect because it is 1 by 2 and then we have rate of disappearance of q rate of disappearance of q is equal to rate of half of rate of appearance of r so yes this all three statements are correct statement c is incorrect okay next what will be the rate equation for the given reaction to have zeroth order so we know r is equal to k a to the power of 0 so that is r is equal to k so the correct answer for this one is option b which of the following is not an application of electrochemical series okay so to compare the relative oxidizing and reducing power yes this is an application by seeing the reduction values we can compare to predict the evolution of hydrogen gas so this is also there so the metals whose reduction potential is more than hydrogen like copper cannot produce hydrogen gas right then to predict the spontaneity of the reaction yes that is also an application to calculate the amount of metal deposited on the cathode so electrochemical series has nothing to do with this this we calculate using faraday's law so the correct answer for this question is option d theoretical but you have to be little thoughtful okay next the reduction potential for the half cell uh, is ag plus concentration is given e naught value is given okay very simple one so what is happening here ag plus plus one electron will give you to ag right we can write the value e of e naught of e of the cell or e of the electrode is equal to e naught minus 0.06 i'll take for easy calculation number of electrons is one log of ag concentration we have to take one i have told you it is always the ion concentration should be taken what is ag plus concentration 0 0.1 right now e of the cell we have to find out e naught of value is already so it is not actually e of the cell i can write here e of ag plus 2a right electrode potential so e naught value given to you is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.06 log of 10 to the power of minus 1 so it will become plus 1 so that is 1 so i can write 0 0.74 so the correct answer for this question is option a okay next henry's law constant is given to us okay mole fraction is given at 760 mm of hg we have to find out so what is the formula for henry's law p is equal to h into mole fraction of the gas so what will be mole fraction formula p of the gas by kh right 
So we can substitute mole fraction. P of the gas given is 760 mm. Okay. And then we have KH value is 4.27 into 10 to the power of 5. Now see, you need not solve it. You can see something. If, if you can write down this one as so 10 to the power of minus 5. Right. Then if we divide it, this minus 5 power can be adjusted to minus 3 and all other options are not having any power. So if you solve this also, you will get the correct answer as option A. Okay, next. What is the mole fraction of ethanol in vapor phase? Yes, this is one important formula. If the solution contains equimolar mixture of ethanol and methanol, given P0 of ethanol is 90 and P of methanol is 46. Okay, see here. First of all, we will calculate what is the formula of mole fraction in vapor phase that is equal to pressure by Pa by P total. Okay. So, we were asked to calculate for uh, vapor phase of ethanol. So, I can write P of ethanol by P total. So, for that first we have to find out this P ET and P total. So, what is the formula of P total? Using Raoult's law we can write. Um, mole fraction of methanol into P naught of methanol plus mole fraction of ethanol into P naught of ethanol, right. So, if both are equimolar, so let for example, methanol I will take half mole, uh, x mole and ethanol also x mole. Then what is the mole fraction? Mole fraction of methanol will be x by 2x that is half right similarly both will be half so i can write it here 1 by 2 into what is the p naught of methanol 46 plus 1 by 2 into ethanol is 90 so i'll get 23 plus 45 that will be 68 so total pressure is 68 and what is the pressure of ethanol 45 right so we can substitute here mole fraction in the vapor phase will be 45 by 68. So, you can solve this the value will be getting will be around 0 0.34. So, the correct answer for this question is option A. So, this question is little I will say this formula you may not you may not have remembered. So, please keep it in mind mole fraction in vapor phase will be the pressure by divided by the total pressure. Okay, next. Which of the following exhibits the highest boiling point? So, here if you remember, we have done just for freezing point. In freezing point, for highest freezing point, I m value should be low. Okay. But for highest boiling point, the I m value should be more. Okay. For highest freezing point, I m value should be least, and for highest boiling point, the I m value should be maximum. So, you can just calculate here, this is 0 0.1, this is 1, this is 0 0.01 and this is 0 0.001. So, the highest value will be option B. So, the correct answer for this question is option B. Okay, next, which of the following is more stronger acid than phenol? Okay, so the question is from alcohols chapter. So, we should know if any electron withdrawing group is there, acidity will increase. If electron donating group is there, acidity will decrease right. So, you can see here I will draw the structures for both. So, first is ethanol okay, next we have phenyl ethanol okay. next we have para nitrophenol. So, here I think everybody must be knowing that nitro group is a very strong electron withdrawing group right NO2 is a very strong electron withdrawing group it can stabilize the conjugate base and hence the acidity will increase. So, the correct answer for this question will be option C. Okay, next, arrangement of the following compounds. Okay, so, you have to arrange them in the increasing order of their boiling point. Okay, so, boiling point depends on two things. It is directly proportional to mass and inversely proportional to branching. So, bromoethane, bromoethane formula is CH3Br, bromo form is CHBr3, 
chloromethane is CH3Cl, dibromomethane is CH2Br2. So as the mass will increase, the boiling point will increase. So bromine mass, mass is more. Here we have three bromine. So this one will have the maximum boiling point. Right. So you can see which option is having the second one. Yes, this can be the answer. This can be the answer. We can eliminate option B and D. Now you can see here this compound is having two bromine groups. So that will be the next compound. So the correct answer for this will be option C. Okay, next. Compound A is there, okay, which is treated with concentrated HNO3 and H2SO4 to give a compound B, which is then reduced in presence of S and HCl to give aniline. You know the structure of aniline, benzene with NH2 ring. So what should be A? So see, this reaction can happen when you give nitro group, right? And nitro group can be produced from benzene ring. So the correct answer for this question is option B, benzene. Okay, very easy question. Next, which are a pair of geometrical isomers? So geometrical isomers will have cis and trans form. Okay, what should be the condition? See here, whenever you are having C double bond, okay, these two groups, this one, this one which you add here X and Y, Okay, for geometrical isomers to exist, x should not be equal to y, right? This condition has to be fulfilled. Now, if you see the options, uh, for first option, you see bromine, bromine, then it cannot undergo geometrical isomerism. Here also methyl group, methyl group is there. So, that's why that will also not show geometrical isomerism. Here you can see these are two different groups. These are also two different groups. So, now this case your cis and this is your trans. So, the correct answer for this is 2 and 4. So, 2 and 4 is there in option C. So, 2 and 4 can exhibit geometrical isomer. So, correct answer will be option C. Okay, next. For the reaction, this one, the value of Kp by Kc. So, the question is from chemical equilibrium. So, first of all, we should know what is the relation. Kp is equal to KCRT to the power of delta N. Now, delta N is what? The number of gaseous moles of product side minus number of gaseous moles in the reactant side. So, if you see the reaction is like this. CO plus CO2 gives us COCl2. Gas, this is also gas and this is also gas. So, what is delta Ng? 1, right? Minus this side it is 2. That is minus 1. So, I can write Kp is equal to Kc Rt to the power of minus 1. So, I can write Kp by Kc is equal to 1 by Rt. So, the correct answer for this question will be option D. Okay. So, this formula is the basic one of the important formula in chemical equilibrium. So, you have to remember. Okay, next. So, this is important question from common ion effect. Solubility product plus common ion effect. Okay, see here the solubility product of MgF2 is given to us. Calculate the solubility of MgF2 in this much NaF. So, see here how MgF2 will dissociate. It will dissociate to give you Mg2 plus plus 2F minus. Okay, so let the solubility of this be S and 2S. Right, now when NaF is present, how will it dissociate? Na plus and F minus, the concentration of NaF is 0 0.1. So, this one will be 0 0.1 and this one will also be 0 0.1. Now, if you write Ksp formula for this one, Ksp of MgF2, that will be the concentration of Mg2 plus into concentration of F minus to the power of 2 because here we have the coefficient is 2. So, now you can substitute for magnesium, it is S. But see for F minus, there is a common ion, right? Here also S is there, uh, fluorine is there. This fluorine comes from sodium fluoride. So the total will be 0 0.1 plus S, okay? Now what happens since this one is a uh, strong electrolyte, the concentration of uh, this S or this will be very negligible, okay? So we can ignore this S because this undergoes complete dissociation. So we can write down this equation as what was the Ksp value? 
into 10 to the power of minus 11 is equal to s into this one will be 0.1 okay here square is there so 0.1 to the power of 2 so i'll get 7.4 into 10 to the power of minus 9 okay so the correct answer for this question will be option a so this one is little difficult question because it includes both ionic equilibrium uh, uh, common ion effect and solubility product okay next a sample of pure water contains this much gram of sodium this much gram of uh, sorry this many atoms of carbon and 0.1 mole of oxygen atom its empirical formula is okay so this is from your first chapter some basic concepts of chemistry easy one so what are the elements given sodium then we have carbon and then we have oxygen so sodium is 1.15 gram divided by 23 then here this is 3.1 into we have to convert it into number of moles right so if given mass is there so given mass by molar mass is the number of moles then uh, 3.1 into 10 to the power of 22 by 6 into 10 to the power of 23 and then oxygen is 0 0.1 okay so if you divide this we will get 0 0.05 here this is 0 0.05 and this is 0 0.1 so we can divide this is number of moles then simple ratio to find out simple ratio divide all this with the smallest number so 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 will get 1 here you have to divide this one like this 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 that is equal to 1 here again 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 that is equal to 1 here 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.05 so that value will be 2 right so now if you write the empirical formula we will get sodium 1 carbon 1 and oxygen 2 so the correct answer for this one will be option b okay so easy question but this conversion how to find the number of moles that you have to be uh, you should be knowing okay next question which of the from structure of atom see from structure of atom quantum numbers and Bohr's theory is very important focus on those topics so let us discuss qu quickly what are the range for principal quantum number any value can come for azimuthal quantum number values are from 0 to n minus 1 then from magnetic quantum number the values are for minus l2 plus l and for spin quantum number the values are plus minus half so now if okay now n is equal to 4 means l is equal to 1 is possible m value can lie from minus 1 to plus 1 so 0 is also possible spin quantum number is plus half so this can be a quantum number this can be a set of quantum numbers now for option b m is equal n is equal to 4 so l is less than this so that is also correct but see uh, m can also be 3 see for n is equal to 4 the l value are it can be from 0 1 2 or 3 right so 3 is given that is correct the ml values can be minus 3 to plus 3 right so plus 3 is given so that is also correct and spin can be minus half so this combination is also possible now for seeing this one see if we consider this part where we have n value is equal to 4 so if n value is equal to 4 see if n value is equal to 4 then what we will get l value can be 1 that is possible but ml value should lie from minus 1 to plus 1 right but what is the ml value given here plus 2 it cannot be more than plus 1 right so this combination is not possible so the question was asked which which is not possible so the correct answer for this question is option c okay next which of the following is expected to have highest electron affinity okay so first of all you can see here these are half filled orbit like one more electron if you give here and one more electron if you give here will get fully filled uh, orbitals right so option a and d can have more tendency have more tendency to gain electrons right because once if they gain one more electron the 2p uh, orbital will be fully filled so now this one option a is for chlorine and option d is of fluorine right so if you come if you know the electron affinity of chlorine is more than fluorine although fluorine is, is uh, smaller in size 
but the electron affinity of chlorine is more due to due to small size of due to the small size of fluorine there will be electronic electron repulsion as a result of which the electron affinity of fluorine is less than that of chlorine so the highest electron affinity is for option a okay now see the next question which of the following compound has magnetic moment is equal to 0 so you can just see the structure of all the options c cl4 this is square planar complex dipole moments are in opposite direction right so they will cancel each other and the net magnetic moment will be zero if you see chcl3 right so these are having in all in different directions so that will not be cancelled in hf also the dipole moment will towards the fluorine in nh3 also it is not cancelled because the magnet uh, dipole moments are towards nitrogen so the net uh, dipole moment is zero in case of CCL4. So the correct answer is for uh, for this question is option A. Okay, next, which of the following relationship is true? So bond dissociation is given. So you have to remember one trick. So if bond order, okay, if bond order is high, then bond dissociation energy will also be high. Now how to find bond order? So you should remember one table here. If the number of electrons is 14, bond order will be 3. Then if the number of electrons is 15, it will be 2.5. If it is 16, it will be 2. 17, 1.5 and 18, 1. Okay. So, you have to decrease by half. Similarly, if you go other side, 13 is 2.5, 12 is 2, then 11 is 1.5 and 10 is 1. Right. Now, let us see. So, what are the values given here? O2 and O2 minus. So, O2 has how many electrons? 16 total, 8 plus 8. So, for 16, what is the bond order? Bond order for 16 is 2. And we have O2 minus. So, here the total number of electrons is 17. So, for 17, the bond order is 1.5. So, you can see, so if bond order of O2 is more, then the bond dissociation energy of O2 will be more. So, what is the question given? Uh, bond dissociation energy of O2 and minus O2 minus are same. So, that is not correct, right? So, what is the conclusion here? Bond dissociation energy of O2 is more than bond dissociation energy of O2 minus, right? Now, similarly, you can check for all the options. Uh, you can check for now O2 plus. So, what will be O2 plus? The value for O2 plus will be can write here. Okay. So, value for O2 plus will be six, 8 plus 8, 16 minus 1, that is 15. So, bond order is 2.5, right? And bond order of O2 is 2, and bond order of O2 plus is 2.5. So, the bond dissociation energy of O2 plus is higher than that of O2, right? So, that is the correct statement. So, the answer for this question is option B. You can check with the other options also. Okay, next question. The IUPAC name. Okay, this is a simple one. You have to just name the first thing is find the longest chain. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, on th second position we have double bond. First position we have bromine. So, the correct answer for this one will be 1 bromo but 2 ene. Okay, so, the correct answer is option B. Very easy and direct question. Okay, next. What will be the heat of reaction? So, we have came to thermodynamics now. You have to find out whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Okay, so you can, what is the formula? Delta H of the reaction is equal to delta H formation of products minus delta H formation of reactants. Okay, so in this equation, what is there? We can write three times of delta hf of water okay and fe is in all already in its native state so the elements which are in the native state for them formation energy is zero so for h2 also it is zero and for fe also it is zero so we'll get this one minus delta hf formation of fe2o3 that is minus 824.2 okay 
so we can substitute the values 3 times of minus 2 why I am taking 3 because in the reaction we have 3 H2O and 1 Fe2O3 so 3 into 285.83 plus 824.2 so if you solve this you will be getting minus 33.3 okay so minus 33.3 is there in option C and since the delta H is negative the reaction will be exothermic so the correct answer for this question is option C okay fine next question which of the following statements is not correct okay uh, for a spontaneous reaction delta G must be negative yes that is correct enthalpy entropy free energy are all state variables yes that is also correct a spontaneous process is reversible in nature see this statement is wrong a spontaneous process is irreversible in nature then total of all the possible kinds of energy of a system is called as your internal energy yes that is also a correct statement so the incorrect statement is your option number c okay, next oxidation number of sulfur in peroxo monosulfuric acid see here whenever peroxo comes you should be little careful the structure will be having some peroxide bond okay so we can draw like this H2 so it, the structure of this one you should know is like this we have one peroxy linkage okay so this also I can write this oxygen this is minus 1 this is minus 2 this is minus 2 and this is minus 1 so we can write x minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 x is equal to plus 6 okay so the correct answer for this question is option number C okay easy one okay next what is the reaction given below called okay so this one is a uh, simple one see two water molecules are reacting then from this one is dissociating as H plus and OH minus this water molecule abstracts this H plus to form H3O plus and what is left behind OH minus so this reaction is called as auto protolysis of water okay so correct answer is option D so the water is getting protonated by another water molecule so that is why it is auto protolysis okay next question number of electrons present in 18 ml of water for this question one thing you should know is density of water is 1 gram per ml okay now if I write what is this mass of density is equal to mass by volume so mass is equal to density into volume density is 1 gram per ml and volume is 18 ml so I will get 18 gram so total in this 18 ml of water what is the mass of water 18 gram of water is present then what is number of moles of water number of moles of water is what given mass by molar mass so given mass is 18 gram and molar mass of water is also 18 gram so I can write that is 1 mole right that is 1 mole now you see here in one molecule okay in one mole of water okay so in one molecule of water sorry how many electrons are there 8 electrons are there in oxygen and each hydrogen has 1 1 electron so I can say total 10 electrons are there right in one molecule now that in one mole how many molecules are there 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 water molecules are there right and in one molecule 10 electrons are there so in these many molecules how many electrons will be there 6.02 into 10 to the power of 24 so the correct answer for this question is option C next the scientific notation of this one so this is from your first chapter some basic concepts of chemistry so in scientific notation before decimal you have to keep one number right so you have to put the decimal in this position 5.4 should be there so how many is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so the correct answer will be 5.4 into 10 to the power of minus 8 so the correct answer for this question is option D fine that was the last question so please solve all the questions and if you find doubt in any of the questions you can comment down I will personally answer to those questions or if you have any other doubt you can just tell me in the comment section okay 
and if you have liked this video if it is useful for you so please like share and subscribe so that you can get more updates for your preparation thank you